Good morning, friends. The doctrines of grace are a beautiful thing. The fact that we are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in the imputed righteousness of Christ alone, is the very bedrock of our faith. It is a source of so much joy and comfort and peace and confidence. But like so many things that are good and right and honorable to the Lord, the enemy absolutely seeks to twist this good thing and distort it as much as possible. And one such distortion of these glorious truths concerning grace is the concept of easy believism, wherein a person claims they invited Jesus into their heart at some certain point in time, um, they, they say that they believed on him as their savior, they died for sin and so on, but then they proceed to live their lives without any desire to submit to Christ as Lord. As we've learned, acknowledging Christ as Lord means acknowledging him and submitting to him as the master of our lives, as our prime directive and our prime director, that our lives are only by him and in him and through him. But again, there are those who reject this idea. They lump it in actually with legalism, claiming that God is gracious. And so as long as we believe in Jesus as our Savior, that is enough. Our lives do not need to change. We can continue to live in sin. We can continue to live carnally, fleshly lives and yet still be saved. An example of this might be a person who went forward uh, as a youth in a Christian summer camp or VBS or whatever kind of revival, you know, after hearing an emotion laden, inspiring message and, and so apparently gave their life to Christ. They are instructed to write that date in the front of their Bible as the day they entered the kingdom of God. But then with that event firmly fixed in the timeline of their lives, they continue on with their lives living an unchanged life. They pay lip service to Christ. They consider themselves a Christian, but there is no change. They still live for themselves, follow their own pursuits. And despite a cursory prayer here or there, they fundamentally rely upon themselves and their own earthly resources moving forward. But here's the thing, the humility that we've been talking about and the absolute necessity for this humility, as Jesus instructs in Matthew 18, makes it very clear that such a person did not actually exercise saving faith in that experience at camp or wherever it was as a youth or whatever it was. Because the humility that is involved in actual saving faith will not allow a life to remain unchanged. If we go back to Christ's actual teaching, we hear him saying, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Unless you turn. That is the same concept as repentance, which we also talked about in relation to humility. Jesus is saying specifically to his disciples at that moment, You are not humble like this child right now. You must become humble like this child. You must, there must be a change. Now, to be clear, we cannot effect that change in our own power. We do not make ourselves worthy of salvation by making ourselves humble. Not at all. That is the work of the Holy Spirit in us, granting us that saving faith, which does include these aspects of humility and repentance. So none of that is of ourselves, but it still must be there. There's going to be a fundamental change in who we are and how we live our lives as a result of exercising saving faith, which is given to us as a gift from God. And that doesn't mean that we're perfect, of course, from the moment of our true conversion. It doesn't mean that we don't still struggle with sin, including the sin of pride, uh, which is, again, of course, contrary to the humility we're supposed to have. But the difference is that where once we were dominated by pride and self-reliance, self-determination, now we resist those things, which involves a struggle. And sometimes we fail, but the resistance is there. We resist those things in favor of submission to Christ, humility before the Lord, which leads to a changed life and ever increasing sanctification for more change as we understand to ever greater degrees what it means for Christ to be the king and for us to be the citizens, the subjects of his kingdom. And so this is another application of Christ's words informing us that unless we turn and become like children, unless we humble ourselves, we will never enter the kingdom of heaven. We must submit. We must humble ourselves before God, before Jesus, declaring not only that God raised Jesus from the dead as our Savior, but that Jesus is Lord.
And therefore, we die to self and we live to Christ. And friends, that is not legalism. It is simply the glorious and supernatural godly effect of a truly changed heart and mind, a converted heart and mind. It is what happens when a person transitions by God's grace from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Because when God grants us saving faith, which essentially by definition includes that humility and submission, that saving faith by his grace changes us. It can't not change us. And I talk about all this in respect to what is often called easy easy believism, the idea that you just declare Jesus a savior and then you can go your merry way, presupposing yourself on the grace of God to save you, even though you are not submitting to him as Lord in any meaningful way. It's a very common idea in the broader church world, and it's a false idea. It's a false gospel. It produces a false assurance of salvation, and it actually inoculates people against the real gospel. So it creates false converts that are just that much more difficult to bring to true conversion. And that is heartbreaking, friends. And I don't want that for you or for your family, your friends, or or any other loved one. I don't want it for people who are just out there in general. Is God gracious? Absolutely. Can we earn our way into his kingdom by turning and behaving a certain way in our own power? Absolutely not. So please do not think for a moment that I am moving us away from the doctrines of grace and toward legalism. Not at all. It's just that we are saved by genuine faith, not by a sham faith. And genuine faith involves us humbling ourselves, again, provided by God's grace before the Lord Jesus Christ, because he is our savior and he is the king of the kingdom. And if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. I love you guys. Please have a good and godly day. And Lord willing, I will see you soon.